We live in a volcano crater, between the cliffs, canyons, and mountains. We are sisters, Julia and Anastasia, and we live deep in the Australian rainforest. Our goal is to grow as much food as we can and to create harmonic systems between us, the land, and the animals. The volcanic soil makes the most fertile land for growing tropical fruit. The streams run over the cliff faces, between the rainforests, the fruit trees, the meadows, and they slowly make their way to the ocean. In our life living off-grid, we have learnt to understand ourselves and our relationships with the earth in the same way as this flowing water. Like water rushing down from the rainforest cliffs to the ocean, we will shift and move, change our shape, but always find a path forward. We have started work in the garden again. The rainy season and constant floods got the best of the garden, and for a while it's been very weedy and overgrown. But with the dry season finally here, we're feeling really inspired. We have so many plans for this garden, for a flower, duck, veggie paradise, following permaculture techniques where everything works as one beautiful system. We are so excited to get planting flowers like cornflower, cosmos, zinnias, Australian native everlastings, and also veggies and herbs like broccoli, dill, spinach, silver beet, fennel, onions, and coriander. Because the winters are so mild here, it's sometimes even our best growing season because we don't have the issues of rain or too many weeds or extreme heat. We made this compost from house scraps, lawn clippings, cardboard, and goat poo, and now it has turned into the deepest nutritional soil. This garden always reminds us that everything is connected, as simply as dill growing well with cauliflowers, or as complex as this whole system working as one. The dirt, the worms, the organisms, the plants, the weather, us and the animals. These woven systems create a web of life. Planting the seedling will not only feed us in the future, but it will also feed the bugs, animals, give back to the soil, and be a small part of a circular and interconnected system. This valley has a big history of banana farming and the hills stretch with plantations. Years ago, our dad and grandfather were both banana farmers and this farm was actually filled with bananas. Since they passed, we've been disconnected from the industry, growing only a few plants for ourselves. But this week, I got to visit a farmer off the top of the valley, underneath the cliff faces, who is farming bananas organically. This is Craig, he knew our dad and they would always chat while Craig was on his way to his farm and our dad was picking kiwi fruit or chasing after runaway sheep. Craig actually once bought bananas from our dad before he was farming them himself. They both exchanged their knowledge as well as a few beers. It has been so amazing to learn from Craig. He has so many inspiring and industry changing techniques. He uses permaculture systems with his fruit. Conventionally, banana farming can use harmful herbicides, but instead, Craig uses sweet potato as ground cover, eliminating weeds, but also bringing nutrients and keeping the soil moist and full of life. This, in turn, helps the banana plants, as well as the soil. It has been so amazing to learn from Craig, and I'm so excited to plant some more bananas at home. Exploring back through the banana plantations is so beautiful letting the swaying leaves lead me home. In the home garden, we have sweet potato covering the ground and this acts as a ground cover and keeps the soil moist and adds nutrients and all sorts of things. And then we've got turmeric in the mid layer and this is a tamarillo tree. There's also some papayas and citrus and all sorts of things and it all acts as one system working together. I was so inspired by what Craig said about making his sweet potato underneath the 
banana crops and how it works as a ground cover. So I think I'm going to take some sweet potato cuttings and take them and put them underneath my bananas because his systems are working so beautifully and I'm feeling very inspired. So I have some pumpkin here. Oh, there's actually a tiny pumpkin on! Cute! I hope it lasts the winter. Which is acting in the same way that sweet potato does and it's keeping the soil wet and nutrient rich but I've sort of neglected the rest and it's quite either dry and hard because we're going into the dry winter or it's got lots of weeds and grasses so I'm following Craig's advice and I'm adding sweet potatoes everywhere. <laughs> Once a massive volcano stood here. When it erupted, it created reaching craters that spread all the way to the coast. The original volcano still exists and its peak is said to be the first place for the morning sun to hit in all of mainland Australia. We live on the edge of the caldera, nestled amongst the rainforest and cliff faces, below the banana plantations. Life is quiet up here. But down the valley, through the fields and meadows, and to the ocean, it feels like another world. Craig takes his ute full of bananas to the local farmer's market at the beach to sell them. On the coast, there are a lot more customers and a community of locals passionate about organic food. When he's finished at the market, he goes for a surf in the ocean, and on his way back to the banana farm, he follows the creek back to the source at the top of the hills. Being a surfer and passionate about water also brings a consciousness about the importance of what goes into the creek and what will eventually end up in the ocean. This creek is the beginning of the river, and up here everything is so pristine, and it's so important to keep the water free of chemicals and plastic. Throughout the creek there are thousands of tiny sparkling crystals, and embedded deep in the rock there are massive geodes. It feels so magical to witness this beauty. These crystals were uncovered in the flood in February, but this isn't the only change since the flood. Massive landslides scar the valley, covering what used to be established banana forests with massive boulders and rubble, leaving no trace behind. This is the land of the Rockwell and Minjimbal people of the Bunjilung Nation. We acknowledge the traditional custodians of the country we live on, and recognise their continuing connection to the land and waters. We thank them for protecting this rainforest and its ecosystem since time immemorial. Waters 
So the ghost in the wind of the night He was grace for the calling I put my feet out in the water Deep and still I do not burn And all my life I know I know I've been so cautious With the wind let it go Since bananas are no longer grown from seeds, but they are instead grown from cuttings or offshoots of other plants, it means that every banana is basically a clone. Bananas are the fourth largest crop in the world, but because they don't have genetic diversity, it means that they are very susceptible to disease. In the 50s, almost all of the most commonly grown banana was wiped out, and now Panama disease is spreading through the world's bananas. But there is hope. There have been studies about the soil properties in organic banana production suppressing the disease. Harmful chemicals, overproduction, and monocultures are extending the banana extinction. But organic farmers like Craig have solutions for eliminating the need for herbicides, for growing them in an interconnected permaculture system, and for keeping this much-loved snack safe. One of the ways that we, as consumers, can help against the threat of the banana extinction is to buy organic and local and not support monoculture crops that are transported across the world. We are very lucky to have local farmers markets. We don't come to the beach very often, so when I do, I get distracted by watching the sunrise, swimming, and looking for dolphins and whales. But the reason I came all this way was to see Craig at the markets. Once a week, the community come together at the local farmer's market to celebrate local food and buy their groceries. We love buying whatever we can't grow here, because not only is the produce fresh, local and delicious, but we can also chat with the farmers themselves. Everyone is so proud of what they grow and keen to share their tips. The celebration of buying food at the markets makes ordinary tasks become beautiful. Suddenly, the chore of grocery shopping becomes filled with meaning. The other amazing thing about the farmer's market is that there are always local musicians playing. This is Josh Lee Hamilton and his music has been throughout this video. I heard him playing at the markets and I was so in awe. You can find his links in our description. So today, Wim and his friends are finally getting a pond. They have a temporary pond and since summer I've been trying to build them a pond. When it was really wet I tried to dig it by hand and it was so hard. But finally today, our neighbour that has an excavator has come to help out with flood damage and I'm going to ask him if he can quickly try to dig out two ponds for the boys. One pond on top that then has a waterfall that goes into the pond on bottom. But before he comes, I need to clear up everything and make sure it's easy. Move the electric fences, move the ducks, put them somewhere. I don't know who's more excited about this pond, me or the ducks, but I'm so excited. It's finally happened. It's been months. They've been playing in like a little plastic pond, which is fine, and they like it, but I want them to have the best pond in the world. We've got Wim and Sailor, and it's time for bed. They don't want to go to bed this early. I'll let them out later, but they have to hide while the excavator's here because I don't want them getting in the way. You ready to go back into bed? Moth! Bird? Moth, stop teaching your son bad habits. So we have these two piles of lantana and other weeds that we've dumped here because this paddock used to be overgrown with weeds and then we cleared it all and we were going to burn it because otherwise it grows back. Um, but we haven't got time yet and I need to move it so that the ponds can go there. Also, I did say that all the snakes had gone into hibernation, but yesterday I saw the biggest carpet python ever. So 
Now I'm a bit worried that there's going to be a snake in there as well. big pile instead of two small piles now but at least they're out of the way and we can have a fire there one night and burn it all because otherwise lantana comes back like this which is because we didn't burn it in time and it starts to regrow and it's such a pest it'll just keep spreading and spreading Another exciting thing that is happening is that our neighbour on the excavator is also clearing a path through the bush in the back paddock. If you've been following along, you've probably heard us talk about this dream a lot. We have huge plans to fence this bushy paddock and regenerate the bush with the help of the goats. The fencing has been so overwhelming, but now with this track, it makes everything doable and we're so excited. Thank you for watching and please subscribe. We thank our patrons so much for helping us care for this land and plant trees. We have so many big and exciting plans for caring for the land.